Hi, look, I cut my hair and I don't quite know how to style it yet, so please excuse what this thing is. But that's not really the point of this video, so. Hi everyone, I'm back. And for today's video, I really wanted to talk a little bit more about short stories that I really like, um, specifically those from George Saunders. So I've done this sort of video series type. It's not really a series because I've just done once, but it could be a series. Who knows? In the future, if you know you guys like it, and also in a time of time. So this is like one of those videos where I just sit down and really talk a little bit more about. A short story author that I read quite often and recommend a few of their pieces. So the last video that I did, I'll leave a link down below, it's short stories. I think I picked six short stories from Junpa Lahiri who is like one of my favorite short story authors and one that is very similar to I guess how I explore my own fiction. Um, but for this video I wanted to feature an author that's completely different from how I write um, because you know fun fact I write short stories and you can read them online if you want <laughs> but that's not again yeah that's not the point of this video so the point of this video is really um, listing out really quickly this some of the short stories that I like from George Saunders so George Saunders like I mentioned I don't know if I did I just say that this is about George Saunders but yeah this is about George Saunders I like George Saunders I think I have friends who's like Stop talking about George Saunders. Anyway, these are just some of the short stories that I like from him. And I think one of the reasons, before I quickly go to the stories, I guess I'll briefly mention like why I like reading his stories. First of all, yeah, because he writes com something completely different from the stuff that I write, um, which is really refreshing. Because if like, you're focused on a certain writing style, it's always nice to just step back and read someone who's completely different from you and just soft refreshes. Um, your mind it gives you a little break from and takes you out of everything for a little bit and I think this is what um, drew me to George Saunders' work in the first place. His work is really rooted in um, realist settings like when you read his pieces you're not transported to another world or transported to another dimension everything is familiar but the way he sort of renders it it's a little bit different he adds a little bit of weirdness in it um, fantastic elements that makes you go like okay this is not something that I encounter every day but the way he has written it has sort of is making me feel like this is something that I do encounter every day or may encounter every day and I could be fine with that or I could not be fine with that so it's the type it's the type of writing which I like because it sort of question it makes sort of makes you like question um, certain elements of the world and how everyone is sort of living their lives and it's interesting to me. So yeah, before I just continue rambling on, here are five short stories that I like from George Saunders and you may want to check out next time you're looking for a short story to read or a collection to pick up. Um, most I think most of these stories are available online so I'll be leaving um, the links down below so you can just click and read and let me know what you think of it. Did you like it? Is Are his stories something that you could appreciate or you just didn't understand why he writes like that or why he exists which is rude because everybody has the right to exist <sighs> okay so the first story that I would recommend is Sea Oak it's from his collection that was released I think 2000 Pastor Pastoralia Pastor yeah. I can't pronounce things today but anyway here's why you should probably read Sea Oak because they, there are like male go-go dancers and an aunt who dies and her ear falls off. I think she climbs out of her grave and then she comes to visit her niece, nephew, family, whatever and she just hangs out with them with her decaying body and all. So, And people are like, oh, okay, you're here, aunt. What's up? Um, you're doing fine. Maybe we should try to figure out what's wrong with you. If that sounds interesting to you, then read it. But the next story I would recommend from his 10th of December, which is from his short story collection, 10th of December, which was I think released in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. So 10th of December tells the story of this boy and this 
man. So the man wants to like kill himself and the boy is just like, mm, just walking through this really cold place, um, like woodsy, cold woodsy place. And they somehow sort of encounter each other and I won't say anything more. So if you don't quite know what to make out of his like weirder stories, um, then definitely check out 10th of December. It's a lot easier to digest, I guess. The third story I recommend is the Semplica Girl Diaries. Um, this is again from his recent collection, 10th of December, which was released in 2013. This is also available, I think, on The New Yorker. That's where I first encountered the story, before the collection came out. Anyway, so this is basically a story told in diary form um, from the point of view of a father. And this, I would say, is right up the weird George Saunders type of stories. And if you want to read about a character, talk about having these hanging dolls, or actually they're actually almost people being hung outside people's houses on like a laundry line, I think, um, and have it be normal and have it be something that people want to have these girls hung up for display, um, if that seems interesting to you, then read it. It's truly a story about the aspirations of people and sort of the things that they think they need in their lives to sort of reach a certain like status in the world. Like if they have a bunch of these girls hanging outside their house, they're pretty cool. So if that interests you, go check the story out. So the next story I would recommend is My Flamboyant Grandson from his short story collection in Persuasion Nation, I think. And fun fact, I used to actually teach literature for a while to like college kids back in like four, maybe four years ago and this was one of the required readings that I would um, set for the class. The story is set in a semi-dystopian era um, and follows the story of a, son, a grandson and a grandfather and it's really piece about non-conformity, about how as much as the world sort of sort of wants to invade your personal space and wants to invade the way you live your life and sort of want to box you in a certain way, um, all you sort of really need is just a person to be right next to you to tell you that it's okay to want to live your life the way you want to live your life. And finally, the last story I would recommend is the Red Bow. It's also from his short story collection, The In Persuasion Nation. So this story follows what happens in a town after a girl, a little girl there gets bit by like a rabid dog. Um, and just you just sort of see sort of the decline of the town as it happens and as paranoia sets in. And I think what I, what I really like about the piece in the first place is because you don't really there, you don't have the sense that something is amiss until sort of you get like, halfway through the short story and you're like, okay, this is getting strange. And then you get to the end and you're like, oh my god. Like, oh my god, the town has just declined so quickly. So those are my recommended short stories from George Saunders. Have you read any of them? Do you, do you like them? What are some of your favorite stories from him? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!